Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Byronic, and we are playing more Kingdom Come Deliverance, the technical alpha. Today, I'm going to be going over a few of the quests, all three of them, hopefully. Now, before we get started on the quests, you have to understand something about the way that NPCs in this game work. They all have a life cycle, all right? These NPCs interact with each other. They go places to eat, to sleep. When this little bar here at the top right, this is your clock. When it reaches a certain point, they're going to go to bed. So, if you can't find them in the same place, that's probably why. However, if you just start the game and you wait a little bit, they will be in a fixed position for their working day. So first, there's this farmer right here. You need to speak to him first. This starts off the blacksmith quest. Alright, so he'll ask you, uh, you know, say, oh, you're the new guy. Then you say about yourself. And then he'll give this specific note that says, you know, it's not as quiet as I would like. The blacksmith being a good example. Now he says interesting at the bottom. When he says interesting, that signifies that it's related to a quest, but you aren't necessarily getting a quest uh, itself in your journal just yet. Now I'm just making sure that this is the guy. No, he's not. All right, sorry. The NPCs all look relatively the same. The guy I'm looking for now is the blacksmith. I know where he is during, ooh, I think this is this guy. Maybe. Is that his face? I don't think so. No, that's not him. All right. So the blacksmith, his home, once you cross the river, is this place right here. This is where he lives. Now, that's not where he works. He works over here at the smith. Now, I don't think he's actually at the smith right now. Oh, he actually is. No. Okay, never mind. So let's go talk to the blacksmith. What's up, bro? What are you about, boy? Okay, so we say about you. Then he makes this snide comment because he's basically a jerk. Okay, and we can do it again. He'll say something else, another snide comment. All right, fine, we're done. There's nothing that we can do about it. So, you know, the farmer was like, oh man, this blacksmith, he's an asshole. And well, you know, you went to him, you talked to him, see if you could work something out, but you can't. So let's return to that farmer real quick and see what kind of information he'll give us. Because you know what? There's nothing else that we can do, at least with the blacksmith. He's a bit stubborn. So, okay, good, he's still here. I was hoping it wasn't too late. I'm trying to go through this quickly because I know where they all are at the moment. So let's talk back. Oh, we're talking to his junk, okay. Uh, so ask him about it again, about himself. Then he mentions the annoying blacksmith. The dialogue continues, now you have new options. So I'll say, I know him. Uh, oh, the blacksmith, I've met him, didn't really care for the bloke. He's too loud at everything. He's constant hammering, ping, you can hear it, blah, 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 blah. So, he's always on that flute when not on the hammer. I'm not sure which is worse. Blast that bloody flute. Okay, so, what ends up happening is he wants us to steal the flute. We have the option to say no or yes. So, and you can see at the top right, find an item, quest started. Now, I don't know where we can actually view... Oh, here we go, quest log. So, we can actually go to the blacksmith's house and steal the item. Okay, so that's what it says in the quest journal. Now, if you if you forget where it is, you can always go back there and find it. So let's go ahead and head back to his house. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little jump start. For the bow and arrow quest, you're going to need 10 noshes, or goshes, whatever the, the currency in this game. It's right here. Um, anyways, you need 10 of them, and I'll, I'll explain to you what happens in a second. Okay, so here's the blacksmith's house. Let's go inside, go to this room right here, and voila, there's the flute. So you can go ahead and pick it up, and you've taken the flute. Now, we have two options. We can either bring it to the farmer, or we can go talk back to the blacksmith. Now, bringing it back to the farmer gives you eight currency, eight nosh, g goshes. If we bring it back to the farmer, he gives us ten. God damn it, where the farm, where the blacksmith go? Uh, okay, so we have to go find the blacksmith. And that's, that's what I'm getting to. The blacksmith and the rest of the NPCs have their own life. They do their own thing, so they may not be in the same place at the same time. Is that the blacksmith? I don't know. When they're sitting down here, you actually can't talk with them. So it becomes a frustration. Uh, it's not you. Let's go back into his house. Maybe he was in there and I just didn't notice. I don't think so. That's his wife. Oh, wait. Is that you? Oh, hey, that's the blacksmith. Okay, so... I have your flute. We can ask that, or we can ask where he lives, just in case we didn't know where his house was. It'll direct you here. So, I happen on this flute. Don't ask me where. Perhaps it is yours. He says, oh, that's mine. How did you come by it? And we can tell the truth, or we can lie. Now, I haven't tried the lie, but I'm going to say I stole it. 
So we, we say some neighbors. We don't out the farmer. And so, oh, that bastard again. But you're giving it back to me, right? So at this point, you could still say no. But I'm going to just go ahead and give it to him because, you know, I'm a nice guy. Uh, I'm duty bound to return it. Thank you. Here's some coin for your troubles. And the dialogue. Now, if you go into your inventory, you can see we earned 10 coins instead of the 8 that you would have gotten from turning the flute back into the farmer. Now, this is important because the only way to do the bow and arrow quest is to have 10 coins. Now, so here's the blacksmith's house. If you want to start doing the bow and arrow thing, come on. Uh, uh, there's two different ways that you can get there. So come on back here and then walk over here to the, uh, the archery range. This is where you're going to find the uh, both the archer if he, when he eventually gets there. Again, we have to be at the time for the uh, the archer to get here. He doesn't start here, so you have to wait a while. So let's go ahead and stop and talk to the archer. Now, before you actually have access to the archer, uh, he's going to say something like, "I'll meet you over by the forest, and we can go to the shooting range." It still will take him a while to get there. So once he's here, then you have these dialogue options. So he's asking, you know. You don't look like an archer to me. Looks can be deceiving. So he basically asks, you know, do we have a bow? And we ask him to lend us one, but only for a fee. So he asks us originally for a 10 currency. And we'll say, okay, sure. and No problem. We have the money. And then I'm glad you have the spirit. You might be an excellent archer after all. So he'll right there's the text right there. 10 groshes. And I'll lend you the finest bow. God, okay. So we're basically playing a betting game. If we fail, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, we uh, we lose our currency, and that is about it. So, now, here's how you go ahead and use the bow. First, you press 1. It pulls out the bow. Now, if you see this peg, these two pegs, if you go in front of it, you can no longer use your bow. You can't just cheat. So, you hold right, uh, if you, okay, so we have pressed 1 out. Oops, I put it away. Ha. So, if you hold left mouse button, you start using stamina by aiming down the bow. If you press right click, it actually puts your bow down just in case you don't want to fire your shot. Now, I have gotten a few different strategies for aiming the bow, which actually work pretty well. So I'm trying to aim at basically the second to third knuckle. And I actually have done really, really well in the past. You basically just keep firing. And the red gives you more points. The yellow gives you uh, two points. So two points for yellow. I believe three points for red and one point for blue. So what you want to do is you just you want to try to get obviously in the red, uh, but our goal here is to reach a certain point value uh, before we run out of ten arrows. I'm getting some stamina back. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, that little golden bar slowly drains as we go along. And what's going to end up happening is Okay, so we're done. We're out of arrows. We got 24 points. That's more than enough for what this guy's asking. So we go back. Shooting range, yes. So how did I do? And he said, not bad. So this time, we went ahead and finished. Because of that, we won the bet. So we got 15 now. We're up to 15. So what we can do is let's go ahead and do this one more time. Hello again. So what he's going to do is he's going to wager us for a higher amount. Now, we start off at 10. 10 points for 10, essentially, which is really, really easy, to be honest, once you get the hang of it down. Uh, now, the thing is, is that when you get to the higher values, if you reach a certain point value overall, he actually gives you the bow and arrow, okay? And I don't remember what the points were. I ended up, like, on the time that I actually did it, I hit most red. Like, I've only hit one red so far, which is, it, it's whatever. I mean, I'm still going to get the the actual goal. But if you fail, you do lose all your currency, and it does kind of suck. But so far, I'm doing pretty good. Just using my strategy here to aim to the uh, second to third knuckle. It works all right sometimes. Let's gonna do this. Oops. I'm really low on stamina, so I'm gonna wait a second. Now, by the way, do not go back and talk to him. Even if you are not, like, if you're not done yet, don't talk to him. Because the problem, well, at least what will happen, is, uh, he'll consider you finished even though you still have arrows and that's bad okay so he says we're not bad we did it let's talk to him one more time let's wager for 20 this time so choose 20 now we're just making bank guys this is basically what it comes down to so i'm going to bring out one this time i'm going to try i'm going to see if i can get mostly red so i'm going to focus just a little bit okay got two red so far Three red. Ooh, I'm on a streak, man. 
Oh fuck, I missed the last one. That's alright, you don't need all red for it, but it does help. Like, I've missed two red so far. That's, damn. <laughs> well, you know, I, I still... I should at least get the value for my 20. Okay, there's red. Let's get some more stamina. Wait a second. Come on back. There's another red. We might be able to do this, actually. Do we have one more arrow? Damn it. Okay, 26. 26 might be enough. I don't remember. Let's talk to him real quick. Shooting range? Yes. Not bad. Okay. So we said not bad. It wasn't the best. Which kind of sucks. Shoot for money. Now, if you do a really good job... Like, y y you can do it in any of these competitions. Any of these competitions, you can actually get it done. You just have to hit most red the entire time. So if you get to a... A certain damn it if you hit to a certain point value uh you will get that free bow and i don't think i'm gonna end up doing it this time but uh that's all right it's not really that big of a deal because you know this is technical alpha and what, what would end up happening is you can actually run around with the bow and uh shoot things and shoot people they don't die they'll fall over like they have a death animation but they'll just get right back up and that's about it God, I don't, hopefully, I can actually finish this. I don't want to fail. Because if, if, if we, if we fail, then we lose 30. And I don't want to lose 30. I think, okay, that, wow, wow. <laughs> that was pretty bad. But I still got it. I'm pretty sure he needed a minimum of 22. All right, cool. So, you can continue to do this if you want to. But as you can see, we're already up to 50, uh, groshes. Which is pretty cool. So, Next up is the Shepherd Quest. The Shepherd Quest is the, I believe, the last quest in this game. So what you have to do is, if you find the archer, just follow up right up here. You can see the sheep right there. That's a good sign. Keep following the road. And you should come across the shepherd. The shepherd should be right here. He should be sitting down right there. Okay, well, the shepherd is not here. What time is it? Your clock! Your clock confuses me! Okay, so the shepherd is not there. He should be. But, uh, yeah, if you if you come here, I think earlier, the shepherd will be there. So that's where you want to go. It, it, when, you, when you talk with him, what ends up happening is it's just like how we talked with the farmer and the blacksmith. You engage the quest, the quest begins, and you can actually find the lost sheep. So what you want to do is you want to keep going. You want to go back to the beginning of this mini zone. All right, so you'll follow all the way back up to the beginning. And we're, we're, what we're doing is the shepherd doesn't ask you to do anything. He simply says, hey, I'm a shepherd. What's up? That's all I do. Now, what is around this map are a few placed sheep, lost sheep. And if you direct them back to the shepherd, then you will get a reward. And I believe that reward is a torch. I don't know. I, I know that you can complete it. I've seen some people do it. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and come on over here. So once you're up at the top, walk all the way down to this second platform, and you'll find the sheep right here. So what you want to do, the way the sheep mechanics work, is he actually will start running away from you once you're a certain distance uh, to him. So he's still running right now, but uh, what you want to do is if you want to direct him and guide him, you need to basically face directly behind him, and this will happen. So see how I'm... Damn it, woman, move. So... As you can see, depending on how far or what angle I'm at, he'll run in that direction. So what you want to do is you basically just want to take him back to that shepherd, to that location. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing here simply because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a mundane task. But this is, I believe, the third and final quest. A lot of these quests, as you might have noticed, are kind of hidden. So you don't really know uh, how to do them until... You, uh, you actually explore. And I think that's fantastic. This game really focuses on the exploration um, aspect of it. So if you want to find, try to find some, go ahead and do it. But yeah, go ahead and take him all the way back to the shepherd. He doesn't go by himself, actually. You have to direct him. That's just how this, that's just how this works. If you get close to him, it appears he starts going on a forward path constantly. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you in this video, since we have some time, is the forest. Now... If you guys saw, right here is the stream. 
Uh, you can come on up here on the bridge. When you come into town, there's the, there's the pond and there's a stream now. If you follow this stream all the way in the back, it takes you to what the boundaries of this map allow you to go the furthest. There are invisible barriers in this map. It does kind of suck, but I mean, it, we knew that, that that's what was going to happen. So you just keep following the river. It's going to, well, <laughs> river, it's a stream. It takes you back into this forest, which I find absolutely stunning. Now, if you play this, you can hear the sounds of the, for the forest completely changed than what the open fields were like. There's, uh, there's different birds chirping. The, the environment is completely different. The details is significant, like there's little pine cone things on the ground. So you just keep following it, and it kind of opens up to this forest. And I think the idea of this forest is it makes you kind of grasp the nature of this game, both literally and figuratively. I mean, this game, it just looks amazing. I'm, I'm so excited to uh, to have a chance to play the technical alpha, and this is about as this is as far as you can go. You can't go any further. This is a giant cock tease by Warhorse Studios, but uh, I think what they've done so far for this technical alpha is really solid, especially for for uh, the first element of it being a Kickstarter release. Anyways, folks, that is pretty much all the content there is to see in the Kingdom Come Deliverance technical alpha. Uh, I may do a initial impression. Uh, of what I've seen. You got, if you guys have watched both episodes, then you will kind of have seen what, uh, my, what my impressions are already. But I think something more concise uh, is worth for this game. I, th I think it, it deserves it, definitely. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really looking forward to more content. They should be coming out with new Kingdom Come uh, Deliverance content within two months or so. That's their kind of release schedule for this. Their studio is a lot smaller than, say, Cloud Imperium Games. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time.